table here. It's not cold enough. That's what they said. It feels cold, so it only got in the mid 40s. I'm gonna check here and see if this uh, evaporator is messed up. Let's see what we got down here. Yeah, about 50 area. That's hard to read. All right, so the extension cord or the cord comes down here to splitters, and splitters go to computer splitters, all kinds of happy jerry rig crap. Truth says, do not put our cooler on an extension cord. That's what they say. All right, just like most manufacturers. Oh, lucky, I think I finally found it. Now, they're plugging into that outlet there, but they're plugging it in way over here on the surge strip. What in the world is this crap? Is the green one feeding something? The green one goes that way. Well, it goes around the Yellow Brook Road here, and then it goes up in here. Nice. Danger, risk of fire, Severe R290. Surprised it's lasted this long, honestly. So the coil is not horrible. It definitely ain't great. I mean, it's got some crap on it. But when you look at it from the back side, you can see the light through there. And since it's R290, there's no good way to know if the charge is good unless we tap this puppy. Which usually I'm hesitant to try to avoid. It was already cranked as cold as it goes. So. This one's a weird one. They got like a little shield thing around here. I feel ice. Yep, that's what's going on. This is kind of odd. They got a tray that goes right here that keeps it separated between the top and bottom. They don't really have any of these at any of their other locations. So, from what I'm seeing here, it looks like we've got a froze up coil. Frozen isotysis, something like that. That could be a problem. Yeah, she frozen. She frozen. This definitely seems like one of the more poorly designed boxes they've got. This um, aluminum is flimsy as all get out. This, all this crap has to come apart. The motor's here. Like I said, I've not had to deal with this one. Not very much. This looks like, just from what I'm seeing here, that's probably the leak. I can just about guarantee it's leaking which we'll do a scan of it, but I'm still trying to dig out the 600 screws they put in here. And the way this aluminum is, I don't think any of it's gonna hold worth the, worth the crap for later. Yeah. I might bury it a little bit further. if they were trying to make it explosion proof or what but my god they got a lot of shit in here look at all this crap you got the evaporator there still got more screws you gotta take off to get to it what a and you really barely can get into it Basically just kind of frozen over there to the one side. It's not completely frozen, but it's obviously starting to become frozen. And then there's the little sensor on top for the defrost. It's one of the electronic controls that they use. I'm gonna scan it with my combustion leak detector and see if we got any leaks. Chances are we'll probably be dumping the charge and uh, weighing it back in. Since it only holds three ounces total. But yeah, that's that's quite the quite the deal they got there. This is a TSSU 27. Can't read the rest of it because it all got wiped off. It's down gas, mate. Let's see what we get here. Here we go! 
my eyes picked this up before the detector did, but if you go right here, the gas mate nailed it. You can see the oil there and there. It looks like it's on a couple different places there. seeing anything at all here it's uh pretty small i mean that thing will pick up a fart literally a fart no problem at all even little 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 fart it is what it is so if they want to fix it properly they can replace the evaporator otherwise we just juice it back up and make it run about all you can do haze Cute. Lens broke. What a piece of shit. Right, got everything back together. I'm gonna tap this thing, pinch it off when we're done, and call it a day. We're not uh, in a deep vacuum because it's obviously freezing down or getting cold, I should say. So we're just gonna tap onto that, and when we're done, we'll crimp it back off and seal it back up. There's still too many people that don't know about 290, you know, that could jink around with it, cause a problem. So I'm just going to follow the procedures that you're supposed to. So a quick puncture thing, we'll take this back off and we're done. I have those pliers I could use, but Don't really want to get into that right this moment. Not 100% tried and true just yet on those. Bought them things a long time ago. Yeah, it's leaking a little bit there. As I get into it, you can see the oil. You see the oil right here. It's three measly ounces. Here's we've got it. There we go. That's about 80 pounds on there, so it didn't like uh, put a loop at all, you know. Not sure who Gas Innovations is, but that's what we're going to be using today. And I've got this gizmo here that basically holds the can for you. It's kind of heavy weight right there, and uh, hold the can upside down. And I just use a cheap scale. This vents us out the back door here. We're weighing our new stuff. Take a little bit for it to get through that uh, capillary tube there. Now I am going to mention the reason why I'm not going through and changing filter dryers, pulling a vacuum, all that crap, because I highly doubt this thing's been going into a negative. It's just starting to freeze up. It's still cold. Now if it had been going into a negative, yeah, we'd go through all that, that rigmarole, changing all those things. For right now we're just getting rid of the majority of the stuff that's in there and then we're just going to weigh it back in we're leaving it to a slight positive here we got what five pounds of pressure just vapor good enough we'll go ahead and unhook from this we're going to weigh this in directly with our skill oh did they make this it only fits with certain brands Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Only fits certain brands. What a joke. Oh my god. You guys are a bunch of scam artists. Okay, so the freaking new Calgon stuff actually matches it. I think it was part of their deal. I'm gonna do it in this position. That way it, it's vapor if it leaks. There we go. Should be able to bleed this through. These the small lines. So, purge the hose. Let's make sure it's just three ounces. Yep, it's three ounces. I'm gonna write that right on the back since we're about ready to wipe off the thing. R290, three, OZ. All right, so we got R290 there and evap leaks here at the date. I know how things tend to speed by. Now I'm gonna bleed this here before I press it all the way on. So I'm gonna open up the valve. 
a little bit like I'm doing right here and push all the okay boom as I was turning it on so we're good there this scale here is on I got it on my tool list area if you don't want to spend the crazy money I mean green a hundred some dollars paying a bunch of money but this thing is fifteen dollars twenty dollars and works just fine so there's your ounce. It goes down to second decimal places on ounces. So here we go. See, just wiggling that hose. Cause it to do its thing. So let's open that sucker. There it goes slowly, slowly, slowly. Be a very slow process. We'll probably have to put the uh, bucket in and let it suck the rest of it in, but that's basically where we're at here. Let's go ahead and plug this thing in. I ain't got all day. Let's go ahead and plug it in. It's got electronic control on it, so it's going to delay for a bit here. But it should come on here, hopefully. I forget what the delay is, but it seems like forever when you're waiting on it. Now, the only thing bad about this scale, because it took forever, is it shuts off pretty quick. Because normally you don't need to sit there with the scale on for a long, long time. So we was at 0.4, I believe, earlier. Let's go ahead and suck this rest in here. Pretty sure it's about 0.4. I'll have to play back the video to find out. So we'll take it up to... 2.6 and stop and with the decimal point like I said that's your regular scale is not going to do very good on it okay so we got it in there my digitals in but they put me right here in the cotton picking doorway where you're trying to work and this just does not work it's just ridiculous it's 27 it's 25 degrees so we're right in that ballpark well we're good I'm going to go ahead and crimp this thing off and then uh, raise it shut. I got her shut down. They didn't leave a whole lot of extra here to work with, that's for certain. Let's go ahead and... Catch her off here. Now what you can do... You can put your gauges on it, get the pressure out of it, and see if it builds back up. That would tell us if it's leaking. All right there. Still going up and down a couple times and then stopped. Now I'll spray it a little bit beforehand. It ain't like it's a humongous deal. You just gotta be careful. It's just like electricity, you know, you shouldn't fear it. You should respect it. And it's the same thing with this. Don't fear it, just respect it. We do that by learning how it works, what proper ways of doing things are, and move on. We ain't, we ain't getting rid of it. I see that's not really working as good as it did the first time. I guess maybe you can only use it a few times. Yeah. It, uh, yeah, we'll just put that back in there. Oh. All compression deal anyway. Probably should have just used that tool. That probably would have been easier, honestly. This may not be good for more than one or two uses. I've used it for a couple things, I think. I just like it because you don't have to tighten up all those little dinky set screws and things like that. I like the way this here is just 
screw it on, move on, and go on. Go back together like that, but they don't fall apart and lose it. There we go. Does not appear to be. So we should be good. Looks like we got it. Get that cooled down a touch, see what we got. Sometimes I'll just hold it right there and kind of give it a bath. It's gonna bubble a little bit when you kind of hold it up beside it. Looks to me like we got it. Unfortunately, next time, we're gonna have to undo that whole freaking thing. That's gonna wrap this one up, guys. Just uh, pretty much verified we have the leak, tapped it, dumped it, weighed it back in. Now, if it was in a super low state, I would definitely recommend changing the filter dryer and pulling a good vacuum on it. But we're not going to waste a lot of time for needless things and honestly when you're in a positive it's no different than uh, anything else so i'm going to set this back probably down to a number six because five is the norm and that way it's ready to go but like i said guys that wraps this one up if you like the video if you would give it a thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe check us out on instagram and facebook and until next time we'll catch you on the next one